Earlier today, the Agni VICBM developed by the DRDO successfully underwent what is being called a pre-induction trial, a sort of user-assisted trial, that has taken it closer to deployment with India's Strategic Forces Command, SFC, which is the user in question. This launch was also the third successful launch in a row from a canisterized road mobile launcher. Moreover, this test flight seems to indicate that residual problems with the Agni V's primary battery supply and onboard electrical power have also been resolved. The missile has a contemporary guidance package that utilizes an indigenous ring laser gyroscope based inertial navigation system, RLGINS. For redundancy, it also has a microelectromechanical systems, MEMS, based inertial measurement unit, IMU all developed by DRDO's research center Omeyarat, RCI, in Hyderabad. Both the RLGINS and MEMSAMU are capable of receiving multi-constellation updates from satellite navigation systems such as the American GPS and the Russian GLONASS as well as India's satellite-based augmentation system, GIGAN, to remove accumulated errors in their measurements. The superior accuracy of the Agni-V can also be attributed to the incorporation of a system on chip. SOC, based on board computer, OBC, that weighs just 200 grams and boasts six seven times greater processor capability than legacy printed circuit board, PCB, based systems which could weigh up to 5 kilograms. This SOC OBC has robust communication interfaces such as a three channel bus, etc., and runs on fault tolerant software. The embedded SOC concept used for both guidance and control requires very little power and gives far greater leeway in warhead configuration besides enhancing efficiency. Agni V is not just more accurate but is also more reliable and indeed survivable. While its 2.0 meter diameter, first stage motor is made of 250 grade marriaging steel, its second and third stages have carbon fiber reinforced polymer CFRP. Casings. The second stage also has a diameter of 2.0 meters. The total burn time for all three stages together is estimated to be close to 4 minutes. The use of CFRP stages facilitates greater fuel fraction, enhancing range capability. In the future, even the first stage of Agni V will use carbon composite motor casings, and that would take care of the issue of corrosion altogether and enhance overall structural integrity. The Agni V also relies on digitally connected multi channel communications within its body for the control system, thereby reducing a lot of the cabling that would have otherwise gone into such missiles. This serves to reduce the risk of failure in the missile system and increases dependability. These features have all been validated in today's launch, which was the fifth consecutive successful test of this missile overall. The use of corrosion-resistant composites and digital connectivity within the missile makes it easier to turn the Agni V into a classic wooden round dash that is a canisterized missile system transportable by road and rail ready to launch on demand, with an almost maintenance-free storage and storage life of 10 years or so. Agni V in canisterized configuration consists of a mission-ready missile, a gas generator for ejecting the missile out of the canister to a height of about 30 meters at which point the stage I motor ignites, and the missile speeds towards its target. This cold launch scheme allows the missile to be launched from relatively unprepared strips. Work on a steam gas missile ejection system is currently underway for the Agni V and canisterized ballistic missiles. The missile canister itself sits on the Agni V's transport cum tilting vehicle 5, TCH-E5 designed and developed by DRDO's Vehicle Research and Development Establishment, Omnigar. Enclosed below is an image of the same. The Agni V itself is 17 meters long and has a launch weight of about 50 tons with a 1.5 ton payload which is adequate to carry fusion-boosted fission warheads with yield of 200-300 kilotons. Now, while an Agni V locked and loaded sitting in a canister somewhere in India is not exactly what China likes to hear first thing in the morning, the Middle Kingdom could actually have more to worry about. The Agni V's re-entry vehicle shown in previously released pictures may turn out to be rather maneuverable making things difficult for emerging Chinese terminal anti-ballistic missile ABM, defenses. All three stages of the Agni V in any case have flex nozzle control systems which enhance maneuverability during flight. 
One more user-assisted trial by SFC and DRDO will be done before the UGNIV is considered moves into the early deployment with future trials being dubbed user training exercises. It may also serve as a baseline for a longer-ranged and heavier missile that will carry multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, MIRV, and this missile may be designated UGNIV. Despite the UGNIV's current potency, a MIRV UGNIV will be needed to guarantee penetration against China's ABM system.